You know, I don't really f feel any sorer than I did when I was 40. Let's face it, we don't get any better as we get older at football, I can tell you that. We have more fun though, I reckon. I'm Austin Cookson, and I've just caught wind of this local footballer playing up at Corriong at the ripe old age of 61, he's still putting on the boots. Being a local footy fanatic, I can't miss it. Let's go. Strictly speaking, I'm well past my years by day. <laughs> but um, yeah, I enjoy it. It's a, it's a hoot. Up here, there's a few hills and a lot of fog and stuff to come through to get here, but pretty good when you do get here. Town's quite successful, really, because it hasn't really got a big trade or a big business of any sort. Farming, I suppose, is the main one. Probably makes the town survive, I suppose. It used to be all dairy when I was a kid. It's the only major employer, apart from government jobs, things like the hospital, which employ probably over 100 people. When I went to school, there was 470 kids at the high school. Now I think there's 170 between the two schools, so. so... Between work and education, people leave. They have to. There's no pool of work for them. It's actually a belting place, which probably hasn't had the uh, exposure to the greater community, because we're sort of not on the way to anywhere. There's a lot of towns you drive through, you know, the old gateway village on the way to somewhere. No one goes through Corrion. One good thing about a small place is you actually do get to know people and see them in different contexts. A really old friend of mine years and years ago said, look, the only thing people really want in life is to know and be known to other people. Shorey, an absolute living legend around here. Everybody knows Pete Shaw, like, yeah, that hair, how could you miss him? Yeah, yeah, no, Shorey steps up and, and plays. He's, um, he's, a, he's a character. He's just great value to see a black like that at this 11 and go. And I think you need blacks like that in every town playing footy yeah, to a degree. Yeah. It, it was, was a foggy morning, morning in the lovely town, town of Corio. We made our way to Pete Shaw's, Shaw's place to find out more about him and the town. When I was five, my dad brought a footy home, a full-size Sharon, which was bigger than me. Oh, I went, beauty, a footy. I like it here. It's got a good Corriong feel about it. And I tried to kick it, and I think it went about half a metre. Peter, hey, hey, superstar. Hey. Look at him, got his footy already. Hey, you know, we're ready to go, come on. And then I just kept kicking the hell out of it. <laughs> and kicking the hell out of it. By about 12 months, I could get it to go a metre or two, and you know, you never put the damn thing down. When I was young, he was been around playing for a little while, and yeah, he was a pretty nifty footballer. Disappeared and he come back and he just started playing again. One of the reasons I was, was going to keep going till next year would make 50 years yeah. from beginning to end. Peter was kind enough to show us around his place and give us a glimpse into his well travelled life. Workroom. Hey, producer mode. Um, We've got some good <laughs> some beats in here. Yeah, so there's lots, you know. There's just things by people I've known. And... I think he's a very clever man, actually, when you hear him talk in a conversation. I studied graphic design at Swinburne in Melbourne and then I was living in Melbourne working as a designer in publishing most of the time. Well, I've had, you know, photographic exhibitions and stuff. Some of those are from different things yeah. and painting exhibitions and stuff like that. So, yeah. yeah, it's not footy, footy, footy. That's just something to do in the winter. Me and some of the locals were convinced that's not all it was. Any game he walks off as a bonus, I suppose, but yeah, no, he's, he's pretty special to be playing at that age. My name's Craig Sheather. I'm, uh, President of the Federal Football Club, Football Netball Club, I've got to say. Corriong's team's made up of uh, nearly 100% locals this year. Normally the teams around here are a bit of a foreign legion because there aren't enough people. If you go anywhere, there's less people to do more jobs and things, especially with football clubs. Once upon a time, we were all locals, but that doesn't happen anymore. Last year we had a whole bunch of hockey players and they were all insane. They're just mad. You could turn some of them into really good footballers because they're great athletes. Country footy is special because it actually keeps a community together, even with two teams. It keeps a close-knit community a bit closer. 
I think uh, kids would disappear a little bit quicker if it wasn't for football. And I think that's something the town needs to be really careful of right now is that we've got a, a league that's battling and we can't lose sport. You can't lose sport in country towns. So we need to do something to make sure that, you know, when, when the next generation of kids grow up, they don't have to travel to Albury on the play. I'd really hate to see this town without football. It's, um, yeah, it's a, just a meeting place, I suppose. Yeah, you forget about what to do all week and all that sort of thing. The function of footy and netball in a place like this is social. You know, uh, you've got people who spend all week on farms and on their own and uh, whatnot. So they're, they love Saturdays. It's fantastic. It's their day out. We go around the back. Oh, I love that sound. Pete and I took a stroll down to the Oval where I learned I might get a chance to run around with the old boy. Better yet, the game was a local showdown between fierce rivals the Feds and Corrion Demons. What's the, what's the verdict? Too many numbers or...? Oh, uh, still working it still out. Still working it out, still working it out. Fingers crossed I can get a game. Yeah, if, if I can't get a game, worst comes to worst, I'll definitely run some water. The presentation. As luck would have it. Everyone, we have a new member, number 99. That's it. And I would love to present you with this job on behalf of the Corrion Football Club. Thank you, Well done. Absolute pleasure. Let's go, Sorry. Demons. Dynamic duo. As it turns out, I got more than I bargained for, giving Pete a chance to step into the assistant coach role and me, well, to fill his guernsey. Good luck, mate. Very well. Give it a bit right. of magic in this, aren't you? Hey, first things first, let's welcome Cook on board for today, boys. Get around with guys. We know what today's about, okay? Today's about the jumper. It's about what it represents when we play against Ventures like Tate. One touch, sign me up, baby. Woo. There's a reason they call this the Battle of Corion, and the day wasn't without its fair share of casualties. A brutal three quarters, and the Demons were trailing by five goals going to the last turn. It's not going to always happen, but we're going to fight for it, aren't we? A rousing speech by one of the boys, and we somehow turned it around. To have you guys here and to have you pull on the jump. So mate. much fun. Represent it the way you did. Love it. Corroon until I die, baby. Mate. Let's go. Red and blue, baby. Red and blue. Yeah. Coming to a small country town, Corriong. To be honest, I'm quite overwhelmed with like the experience in general. People are so nice down here. Obviously, you know, the great man Shory, he was my inspiration today. That's the reason we're here. Ripping bloke, ripping story. Um, and I'm in his Guernsey, so I can't wait to get on the waters with the boys tonight and um, really embrace the town. So we're off to the Corriong Progressive Dinner tonight. There's a costume theme, salt and pepper theme, things that go together. So me and Ali, we're going as a knife and fork. <laughs> well, I wrote my epitaph a few years ago, because, you know, as you get older and closer to death, you think about these things. Here's, here's my epitaph. It's for all you little smart asses out there. Every colour you become, I've been before. And as you brightly glow, then fade. Imagine what's in store. <laughs> That's it. Boom. 